Lady and gentlemen, arch cells across the globe are seething right now because their beloved bench press rules have changed. For those of you who don't know and, and don't know much about powerlifting, uh, the arch is a technique used so that powerlifters can lift as much weight as they can in the bench press. Now, what we've seen over the years is an egregious arch that minimizes range of motion to only just a few inches. Here's a nice little compilation of some of the best arches. So now that we've gotten to the rules, there's quite a bit of wording here. And we're on page 19 of the uh, IPF, International Powerlifting Federation uh, handbook here. There's a lot of wording. So I'm going to make it as brief as I can. The spacing of the hands shall not exceed 81 centimeters measured between the four fingers. Both four fingers must be within the 81 centimeter marks and the whole of the four fingers must be in contact with the 81 centimeter marks if maximum grip is used. The use of the reverse grip is forbidden. Now, this is where we saw the biggest issue uh, before the change. No matter what the weight class was, we had people going max grip. So then we'd have completely limited range of motion. Uh, and we have this, again, ridiculous arch. So then the uh, after removing it from the racks, uh, the referee waits until the bar is over the right position, says start. After receiving the signal, the lifter must lower the bar to the chest or abdominal area, whereby the underside of both elbow joints is lowered level with or below the top surface of each respective shoulder joint. So you guys are gonna see what this looks like in the next page. So these two lifts up top are going to be good lifts. Basically says that the failure to lower the underside of both elbow joints level with or below the top surface of each respective shoulder joint. So that's basically what they're looking like. These are two good lifts. And then we see the ridiculous arches. Failure to lower the underside of both elbow joints level with or below the top surface of each respective shoulder joint. I mean, look at this chick right here. <laughs> All right, now I want you guys to look at the most ridiculous bench setup. Look at this. Is this a dude or a chick? I don't know. Look at it. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, this is what we. This is what was happening in in powerlifting. A, a, a really famous uh, archer who who I think he's done really well. Uh, he's pretty big on Instagram. His name's Sean Noriega. He's gonna have to adapt. He's gonna have to change. He did make a pretty funny video on his last post. So look, here's the deal. If you're given a rule set and you're in the rules and you win, good job. You know, uh, anyone that's arching and ends up winning, good for you, you know, b before this rule change, if it's that ridiculous arch that we, we've seen. Once the meet is over, you get your picture, you get your medal at the top of the podium, you know, first place. No one is gonna remember what your bench press looked like or anything like that. You get to write IPF world champion or you know USPA or USAPL uh, champion. And it's kind of a similar effect that we see in UFC, we see in boxing. A lot of times people uh, get really hyped up for MMA fights or boxing matches. And then it's a lot of you know pitter patter and dancing around, not much happens. And usually the guy defending his belt ends up winning. And the thing is, you know, a year from that point where everyone's bitching about this not being a good fight and the guy not fighting and, and just dancing around, you know, a year from that, that's just a statistic. It's, you know, you look at a guy like Israel Adesanya saying that he dances around. Well, no one's going to remember that he danced around. Or they might or might not, but he'll have a title defense next to his name. Until something changes, people are going to continue to do that. So we're seeing a change. The second point to that is no matter what the rules are, the winners find a way to win. The gamers find a way to game. 
you know, I, I know everyone rags on CrossFit, but there's one thing I actually like about it. It's that it is kind of a shit show and the winners always kind of end up at the top. No matter how much CrossFit HQ fucks up with their programming, with the way that their events are scheduled, it's just these gamers end up finding a way to game. And, you know, Sean Noriega, he's a guy who's really good at, at, at bench pressing with the arch. I guarantee you he's going to fix his posture. He's going to fix all these things and he's going to train his ass off and he's going to fight to do just as well as he could. He was given that rule set. Now he's given this rule set and he's going to do what he needs to do. We can complain about rule sets and all of these things, but at the end of the day, it's the guy or girl who goes out there and just gives it their all, no matter what the circumstance is, uh, and, and finds a way to get it done. So look, for a lot of you guys, this doesn't matter. Uh, I'd say majority of you, it doesn't matter because you just go to the gym and you want to get strong. But it's I find these types of conversations very interesting, right? Because we... We do movements like uh, the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat to make ourselves strong. And then we see who is the strongest. And then we find these ways to lift more weights. But does that really prove who has more power, who has more strength overall, who has more general fitness, all these different things? Um, but I believe that at the end of the day, you know, if we change certain things, the good guys are going to find a way to be good. Anyways, that's all I have to say about this. I will see you guys in the next video.